Oakville matters. This time we're talking about economic development in Oakville, and that's one of the things that matters to Oakville quite a lot in order to keep our, prosper uh, to keep our future prosperous. And with me today are Mike Branch from uh, Innovex, Martin Drew from iView, and Matt Earhart from Knowledge Management System Innovations, excuse me, not systems, innovations. Uh, you're part of the digital media, uh, uh, we think, in, in our town. Uh, certainly high-tech digital media. We're, uh, as a council, have chosen to try to attract advanced manufacturing, professional offices, uh, life sciences, and you. And, uh, and thank you for, for being here. I know in some cases we didn't attract you. We found you were, you know, you were here and, uh, before we found digital media. But um, Mike, let's start with you. Tell us the story of uh, your company and Oakville. Okay. Well, we started off uh, in Oakville in about 2003. Um, you know, I've been a resident of Oakville. I've grown up in Oakville almost my entire life. And so when I decided where I wanted to open up a new business, it was naturally going to be here. I, you know, I, I love uh, the work-life balance it offers. I wasn't going to, you know, uh, do the commute into Toronto every single day. Um, I like being, you know, five, ten minutes away from, uh, from the office. And Oakville, in, in general, just has a nice vibe about it. So we started in 2003. We started off around the head office of Tim Hortons area, um, around Wycroft and Dorval. And since then, we've moved to, uh, to Spears. We're between third and fourth line. Uh, and I operate a software company out of that area. How about you, Martin? Uh, very similar story to Mike's, really. We uh, founded the company in 2002. And uh, a, a location with a great work-life balance, but also as a startup company, it's great to be near in close proximity to potential clients. And our solutions really target um, education, healthcare, and perhaps the biggest market we're known for, which is casinos. So we provide securities and surveillance risk management solutions to casinos, OLG notably, um, including facial recognition technology. So the location is great because it gives us, um, we're an easy reach of a target client base, and of course, you know, the infrastructure, and as Mike says, the work life balance in Oakville is fantastic. And Matt? Uh, we started KMI as a startup here in Oakville, uh, just me and my partner, and that was back in 2002 as well. Um, and as we grew and took on office space, uh, the first office that we took was actually in Port Credit in Mississauga, just because that was what was available to us on short notice. Um, but then as we really started to grow, we uh, moved over to back into Oakville, primarily because uh, the people who were on our team didn't want to commute into the city or even into Mississauga. So uh, we uh, have outgrown our office space several times since then, but we continue to, to expand here in Oakville because we attract employees from all over the western side of the GTA, including as far out as Hamilton. Um, so we're just, we're pretty much um, sticky in this area because our employees would rather come here to Oakville than commute all the way downtown, and we're one of the few technical options for doing that. Well, it's, it's, it's great to hear, and it illustrates uh, that when we, when we chose digital media as one of our targets, it's not like we were bringing the idea to Oakville. We were sort of discovering we had these success stories, and we, we believe in cluster success. Mm -hmm. And uh, we thought, well, if we blow on this, maybe we can get more. And, uh, uh, and your own success, uh, I think, uh, at the very least, validates that there's something to it. How much international trade do you guys do? Uh, Mark? Uh, so uh, we do, most of our work is done within Canada, however we have a new startup uh, that we're incubating within Innovex called Maps BI and that has started to uh, uh, attract a lot of export capabilities uh, through to you know the United States, uh, Australia, even in Italy. Uh, so we're looking at doing more and more of it. I mean the predominant side of the business is Canada. We do a lot of work even here within you know the GTA out west in Alberta and Vancouver. Um, it is nice to be close to Toronto, um, but there is, a, I'd say, about you know, 20% of our business does uh, do on the export side, side of things. Well, Mike, you're you're one of my favorite success stories because there's a larger narrative around in in our town, around well, our kids can't, um, you know, the the critique, the self critique that we sometimes subject ourselves to, because you know, in Canada, we like to beat up on ourselves sometimes. <laughs> Uh, is, oh, our kids won't be able to live here, and our kids won't be able to start their businesses here, and, and, and here we, and you're not the only one uh, that, proves, uh, that, that, that proves that that's wrong. Um, have you, uh, uh, what's, your, what's your sense of, of the ability to, 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 to thrive here? 
you know what, I think nowadays it's, um, it's a lot better than it was 10 years ago. And I've seen so many things happen within, you know, OFA, within the region, just in general, uh, that have helped, you know, younger businesses thrive and do better. Um, it was more difficult about 10 years ago to do something like this, um, coming straight out of school. Um, the advancement of, you know, the regional innovation centers uh, like Hall Tech, uh, you know, working in collaboration with institutions like Sheridan, the co-op programs that they have, they've developed quite a bit and it makes it a lot easier to get to where you need to be as a young, uh, as a young business. Um, and these are the types of things, these uh, incubation centers, these innovation centers, um, that we try to replicate models you know, from, from the US. And I think we're, we're starting to make some good progress uh, in, in that direction. There's still, I think, a long way to go, but the progress that we've made to date uh, really inspires me um, to to want to do more, and you know the, um, uh, the various associations like you know Silicon Halt and then that kind of thing that bring together all of these um, uh, technical um, companies that I you know I had no idea existed. You know companies like Martin's at Ivy and you know I've met Matt today as well too. We wouldn't uh, have known about each other if it weren't for these you know uh, high tech associations. Well, it's good to hear that something government is doing is helping at all, because <laughs> it's a narrative that goes around that yeah. we can't do anything yeah. right, so, so that's good. Martin, how about you? What's, what's your sense of, of uh, the things that have helped you the most here? Yeah, I, I think we're kind of in an, inter in, in an interesting market. Um, we found ourselves a, a great niche market, and uh, which we approach you know, rather uniquely in our software, um, in the gaming industry. So we grow pretty rapidly, um, not just within Canada, but certainly in the United States. So most of the properties in Las Vegas, for example, um, use our software. And that expanded rapidly to countries like Australia, New Zealand, um, Macau, if anyone's familiar with Macau, the gaming mecca of the world now, of course, we have just come back from Singapore, and uh, Europe as well. So the majority of our business is overseas. Um, finding talent, of course, has been challenging over the years, but um, as, as Mike correctly stated, some of the programs at Sheraton, um, the innovation events, the innovation forums that are now being conducted in recent years, and uh, organizations such as Silicon Halton, which has now grown from, you know, I think in 2009 is a good example, actually. You know, maybe eight people showed up. We're now over 1,100 members, all representing um, a whole wide range of companies from start-up to more established companies. I, I remember going to the first meeting of Silicon Halton. Was that? <laughs> and uh, it was in that sort of garage door <laughs> enclosement yes. at the, uh, the pizza store. <laughs> and who, who knew it would... Yeah. But there were some visionaries. Indeed, absolutely. Yeah. And, and Matt, what's your sense of what helps here? Um, several things. It's a very stable community. People like to live and work in Oakville. Um, a lot of very successful, um, stable families here. Uh, access to a lot of good university programs. Um, so for us, when we hire, so we're always hiring developers, software developers. And you may have heard the, the idea that the only sustainable competitive advantage is culture. Well, in Toronto, software developers churn from company to company all day long. Whoever pays them more the next day, they'll switch jobs. Um, out here in Oakville, because there's a smaller technical community, as long as you treat your employees well, as long as you have a good team environment and give them the, the opportunity to create good software, um, then they'll stay for a long time. We have a lot of people on our team who have been here for seven, eight, ten years, and that's unusual in, in technology. Um, for us, it's a big deal because it means that we can build a better product. We have people who know not just what the, what the technical aspects of building the software are, but also how it should work, how it can work better. Uh, how the users are going to use it, and um, for us, that's been huge to be able to build that stable team, and we we definitely credit Oakville for giving us the stability of that team. Well, you know, I've, one of my uh, goals as mayor has been to focus all of our our energy and our effort on what on livability, mm -hmm. and uh, the whole livable Oakville plan was based on the underlying premise that if you if you make the town uh, livable, you'll attract the people that you want, and. Uh, uh, I think it's working. Uh, I, all the key performance indicators that I track suggest that it's working, and I'm hearing in some of what you've said um, enough encouragement to keep working on that. Uh, I've got to ask because you know when you read about the high tech world, you you imagine workplace environments with rec rooms and bean bags and candy jars and I don't know, uh, massage rooms or something. <laughs> what, what's it really like working in, in, the, in the high tech world for you guys? Uh, Mike? Yeah, well, you know, we've got a bar in the basement. Uh, <laughs> it works out quite well. No. <laughs> All jokes aside, it's, uh, 
uh, you know, it, it's, it's a nice atmosphere within our organization. Um, it's very open concept. Uh, the way we've kind of designed the office, uh, you know, it allows for a lot of cross communication, really not a lot of doors within the organization, um, no cubicles, uh, that's one thing we, we, we really highly believe in. Um, and so we try to create that innovative culture and I think a lot to Matt's point uh, as well too. Um, the resident of Oakville, the Halton area, you know, likes to be within this area and isn't churning from job to job to job like that might, you know, might happen in, in the Toronto area. And that's something that we pride ourselves on retaining those employees and, and keeping them interested in the work that they do on a day-to-day -day basis, right? So it sounds like the workplace has to be kind of flat and fun. And um, what else, what makes the difference? You, I mean, you're dealing with creative people. And my background was film and TV, where mm -hmm. obviously you have to cater to creative people. Mm -hmm. And uh, our theory was only happy creative people make successful shows, and so we work <laughs> night and day to keep people happy. Do you find yourselves having to chase after workplace happiness? I think so to a, to a large extent, I, and you know, I think the culture of a company is somewhat dictated by the environment that you create, the physical environment. So, um, you know, we've reinvented ourselves several times over the years. We've had to do that. We've got lots of young people that we employ, and myself, I'm not so young, so I have to listen to other people. You know, I come back, come from a more traditional environment in a research organization, but I mean, certainly at Open Plan, we're we're just preparing now for our next move, and all the things that we've learned. Um, are going to be implemented in our new facility, which is on Winston Park Drive. We're currently on Bristol Circle, and much larger premises, so uh, we're almost uh, one and a half times in size. We're increasing our hiring as well. So we've had a great opportunity with you know, doing a build-out to create the environment that we really want and we now know our employees want. So it is a imp imp very important factor, absolutely. So would I have fun there? I think you would. We don't have a jacuzzi yet or a bar, but uh, maybe we'll work on it. If we got the appropriate grants, we'd certainly <laughs> consider it. <laughs> and Matt, what's, what's your secret of, uh, I mean, how happy does the workplace have to be? It's got to be happy. Um, people go to a job, people can work anywhere, right? Unless you want to pay them so much that they'll work there and not like it. Um, most people, the first thing they need is a job that they feel fulfilled at. Um, so our secret is to give people, um, you know, I hate to overuse the word empowerment, but we do try to empower them to make good decisions. We don't, we try not to micromanage anybody. We try to build strong teams and uh, in those strong teams give them a vision of where we're trying to go as a company and then let them use their creative efforts and their, their um, you know, their own thought processes to figure out what the best way is to get there. And if you give people that freedom, if you give good people that freedom, uh, they can really create exceptional things. Well, I hope you'll keep attracting good people. I think we should take a break now, and when we get back, let's talk about what we have to do to make Oakville continue to be the success story that it is. Uh, thank you for joining us for Oakville Matters, and I hope you'll be back when we are. Matters, we're talking about Oakville's economic development, and particularly our strategy around high tech or digital media. And uh, with us today, we have Mike Branch of uh, Innovex and Martin Drew of iView and uh, Matt Her Earhart from uh, Knowledge Management Innovations. And uh, we were talking about how do we make Oakville continue to succeed in, in economic development. And I wonder if you have any specific ideas about what the town should be doing. And or the, let's say, let's rephrase that as the, what, what the municipality should do to uh, uh, keep the success story going. And I, I call it that, I, I use the municipal word because here, municipal services are split between the town and the region. I, I'm a figure in both. I have, a, I have one vote at each, so I think of them as, as just uh, two different buildings that deliver services. Uh, in my mind, they're, they're sort of consolidated. But without regard for which level does it, what, should, what more should we do, or should we just stay the course, uh, Mike? Um, so I've given this a little bit of thought because you look to successful um, uh, innovative hubs like Toronto and, and you look at what makes them s a success as well too. And as important as it is to have innovation within the organization, I think it's also important to have that innovative spirit foster outside of the organization as well too, uh, within the community. Um, uh, so, uh, you know, situations where you have an office that is walkable distance to, you know, coffee shops where people can go and debrief and collaborate or to bars and this kind of thing. Uh, so that, you know, you have that, that, that part of the organization that lives inside of the office is important, but outside of the office is just as important to, I think, foster a lot of innovation. Uh, so, you know, you look at areas like downtown Oakville. 
uh, which is a great walkable uh, area. I think to have businesses situated in that area would be phenomenal. We actually looked at situating our office around that area, but the one downfall to that area is parking. Um, our employees come to work and they, uh, they don't want to be paying for parking when, when they come to the office. Uh, so that was a little bit of a tra detracting factor in that area. So I, I think uh, improving places where we can situate our office buildings within uh, areas that are walkable, that inspire that you know, innovation and collaboration outside of the office is something that's really important. And I think something that Toronto's done quite well, um, and I think we can learn from them to that, sir, to that extent as well. Martin? Um, I, th I think the I think what sort of Mike sort of alludes to is the maybe partly the technology park concept, which would be fantastic. I mean, there are some great office en environments um, that we're in, where we have local service providers as well. I mean, every company needs legal, accounting, etc., and to have those services in close proximity in a t technology park type environment is is uh, obviously very interesting. But I think in terms of what the municipality can do, I think pr continuing or maybe accelerating promotion of awareness that companies like ours actually exist within Oakville and using that model to inspire young people to create their own companies and young, young you know, new entrepreneurs with fresh ideas to create companies in the region because uh, I think we're an example of yes it can be done and the support infrastructure exists, as Mike touched on, um, organizations such as Silicon Halton, you know, promote that um, entrepreneurship in the technology segment amongst you know, young people that you know, come to those events. So I think primarily um, what I'd like to, I'd look to Oak Oakville for doing is obviously creating greater awareness that companies like ours exist. And obviously if you can promote our products and services at the same time, we wouldn't be complaining. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Matt? Um, I would say there's two important things that Oakville could do to help us continue to grow. Um, one is walkable office space. So we're fortunate to be right across from the GO train station, one of the few office buildings that's, that's there. Um, so we can attract people from out west who ride the GO train in from Hamilton. We attract people from downtown Toronto who ride the GO train in. Um, and then everybody who's in the office can walk to grab coffee, lunch. It's just a good, positive environment, which is important to us. Um, we've outgrown that office space several times and always expanded within the building. Uh, recently we outgrew it and there was no place to expand, so we started looking at moving to another office altogether. Um, and there's not that many opportunities for good, walkable office space um, that you can get to from the GO train on your feet and get out to lunch again. Uh, they're building, they're permitting, but I would just encourage the town to continue to, to uh, support that type of development around the GO train. Um, the other thing is uh, the programs at Sheridan. Uh, they have some good technical programs there, um, but that type of uh, environment, the more technical programs that they can graduate people from, uh, the more of a hiring pool we have to choose from that, again, is local. It's mostly kids from the, from the area who graduate and look for a job, so it would be very helpful to us. So uh, an environment that fosters business, and, uh, and I heard a mention of, well, I, I caught a hint of help learning to be an entrepreneur, and we, we actually do provide uh, that. Mm -hmm and you know how to start a business and uh, I, I've always worried that you know people would laugh if we're if government is telling people how to start a business you know there's <laughs> there's <laughs> politics around those concepts right but uh, I suppose uh, if you call it education maybe you can strip away the prejudice against government in there um, you know around the GO stations very interesting area it was uh, it was given to us by I mean the legislature passed a law and a plan that said we have to grow businesses and residences around the GO station. And, uh, and we do have a plan that, that is supposed to create those things. And we now have, uh, well, we've got the PwC building has, has gone up, so that's sort of down payment number one. There's a, another uh, office building a little further uh, east from there that council has now approved. And uh, we're we're, we're proceeding ahead of schedule. The, I remember being told a few years ago, Mr. Mayor, you're the mayor who'll lay down the plan. A future mayor, way in the way in the future, will will see the the buildings happen. And I remember saying, you don't know you don't know me. We're going to make <laughs> that happen. So uh, maybe we'll have something built for you as uh, sooner than you than than that'll cause a crisis. The, uh, the other place where we're building something, or, well, we're not building it, but we're again fostering it, is there's 30 acres next to the hospital, and we have a proposal, which I believe is gonna pass, to create a uh, life sciences 
uh, uh, incubator hub, and it's a uh, it's a it's like a high tech city within a town, right next to the hospital, and uh, there's. Uh, incubation centers, there's businesses, there's every facility that you might want for walking to, uh, even a hotel for your visiting clients, um, uh, no go station. Uh, <laughs> but uh, on the other hand, it is right there on Dundas and we do have a plan to build a form of rapid transit. I, uh, I confess it's a bus rapid transit, but the first rapid transit I ever saw was in Ottawa many years ago. We had a dedicated uh, busway, mm -hmm. and uh, that was a big success. Uh, I know in the rest of the GTA, if it isn't light rail or subway, nobody wants to talk about it, <laughs> depending on which city you are, which mayor you are, uh, or were. And uh, <laughs> but uh, there, so there will be some, uh, there will be some uh, higher form of transit up there on Dundas at the hospital. Would either, would any of you be interested in, in being in that vicinity when that happens? It's like four and a half million square feet. <laughs> I, think, I think from our perspective, I, certainly because, you know, a, a good portion of our business focus is in the healthcare sector, it would make sense uh, and it would be something that I think our employees would enjoy as well too, uh, being able to, you know, uh, walk out and talk amongst uh, colleagues from, you know, other healthcare organizations um, and, and have that, you know, uh, that sense of innovation within the area and being in close proximity also to you know the healthcare practitioners and, and you know it, it's bound to generate um, you know new thought new ideas uh, and new concepts so from our perspective being you know looking at software specifically within the healthcare sector I think it makes a lot of sense for us and Martin you've already said on an, on an expansion point so mm -hmm. you you've chosen your environment for now but at your next expansion where will you what will you be looking for well who knows um, yeah, I mean, uh, we're, we're going to be in the next facility for, uh, we're planned it, hopefully we'll get it right this time between five to seven years. I've got that wrong almost every time, every move that we've made, I've got wrong. And I think uh, one of the facilities we had, I think we outgrew in about nine months, so my planning was not so great there. Well, <laughs> it sounds to me like your planning for success was better than your planning for space. So that's correct, <laughs> absolutely. And so that's probably the right way to do it. I, well, I guess, but uh, it's always disruptive when you move a company, no matter how, how, how large, you know, there's a, there's a lot of things to consider when you move an operation. Um, but I mean, the life sciences concept, uh, uh, that park is, is, is always interesting. I think whenever you can bring um, technology companies together in a single environment. It's amazing what happens. We've seen it you know, at the Silicon Halt meetings, for example. Um, when you bring companies together, these guys generate new ideas, and from those new ideas comes you know, new markets. They, they work to find synergies between the products that, that they're creating, and new products emerges, new joint ventures emerge. So um, a dedicated environment to those kinds of companies um, can generate phenomenal success and new innovation as well, which is obviously what we all strive to do. And you've, you've raised earlier a really important thing that, uh, and I, I confess, I don't think I've kept fully in mind uh, the way perhaps I should have, and that's the synergy with having professional offices, professional uh, support folks nearby, your lawyer, your accountant, and, exactly. and, all, and all of that. Um, when you're growing really fast, do you tend to outsource uh, things like, well, obviously legal, uh, but what about HR? Does that happen inside, outside? Is there a point where you bring it inside? What, what goes on there? There is a point, and I think it, it's, you know, we started our company with four people. We're now about 30-something. And um, you, know, you get to a point where, and I'm sure these guys have experienced as well, where you know, HR management does become an issue. You start off with a young entrepreneurial company, and you know, I've worked in large corporations, so I knew we had to build that framework at some point in time, and we built it pretty early on. Um, so it, it varies company to company, but once you get beyond a bunch of guys having fun creating stuff, and you start selling stuff and become very real, then you have to bring in, um, you have to bring those professional services that you may have outsourced in the past inside. So one of our first tires, for example, was um, uh, as a CFO. We recognized that pretty early on because I'm not good at accounting and I really hate it. It bores me to death. And um, it was one of the best tires we ever made. I'm sure your investors are glad that you have a CFO. <laughs> <laughs> they should be, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and Matt? Uh, yeah, we did also have to bring in house talent for things like HR, right around 25 people, I would yeah. say. We have about 60 people now. When we were at about 25, it stopped being self-managed from an HR perspective. People needed somebody to manage benefits and to talk to and to do hiring. 
Um, we are hiring on average about five people a month now. Uh, we've just hired a new class of 12 people in the last, in the last two months. Um, so our HR manager um, spends probably two thirds of her time just recruiting and interviewing. You know, maybe what we need is to recruit you guys and others like you to give master classes to young people who want to be entrepreneurs for that, that once you've, you've, you, know, you're, you have a business and, you, and it is growing, how do you survive that expansion period? Because I, I, I know that is a very crucial part of business. Maybe we can follow up on that in, in future conversations. Okay. Is there uh, anything else that economic development in Oakville needs in your minds? I think Just I a lot of luck and, uh, <laughs> well, there's and always, investors. There's, al there's always that, but I think they do a very good job. Um, you know, making people aware of some of the um, credits that are available, the S R and D programs, the media credits, and so on and so forth. Um, you know, generally there's um, serious of uh, uh, innovation forms running to it. so educate people as well and keep us ahead of you know a government programs. There's, a, there's another event coming up shortly, which is trying to get uh, companies like ours, although you know we're we're already largely in the export markets, but to take their products to a much broader market, it's not that difficult. You know, the Asia is booming, there's so many opportunities in Asia, and, and even Europe. So, um, well, these, these are great they're points. great programs. And I really appreciate the time you've given us and the public today. This has been Oakville Matters, and we know that economic development matters to Oakville. I hope you'll join us when we talk about Oakville Matters again.